going to look at uh, electromagnetic waves and in particular microwave ovens. So this problem we're asked, we're told a microwave, uh, the microwaves in a certain microwave oven have a wavelength of 12.2 centimeters. So how wide must the oven be so that it will contain five antinodal planes of the electro electric field along its width in the standing wave pattern? What is the frequency of these microwaves? And if a manufacturing error occurred uh, and the oven was made five centimeters longer than specified in part A, uh, what what would have to be the frequency of the microwaves for there still to be five antinodal planes? So this kind of is a test of you know just your, your I suppose basic physics of waves, a little bit of electromagnetism. It's not too difficult, fairly straightforward, but a good problem to keep yourself in practice. So I've started. I'd I'd started um, drawing out a wave pattern for us to work from here. So let's let's examine. The, the situation, I suppose, in the oven. So we have five antinodes. So let's imagine that this, let's, let's draw in red here, the left-hand wall of the oven. So our standing wave pattern starts at a node and we have to count five antinodes in the oven, which is what we're told. So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. And then our standing wave on the other side of the oven ends on an anti, or on a node again. So this is what the situation looks like inside our microwave oven. Now we're told that the wavelength lambda is equal to 12.2 centimeters, 12.2 centimeters. So how many wavelengths do we have inside the oven? Well, I mean, you can work it out, I suppose, pretty easily, or you can just look at it, look at the diagram and figure it out. So we start here. So one wavelength, uh, let's go red. One wavelength is when we get to this point. Two wavelengths is when we get to this point. So this is one, this is two. And then we've got another half wavelength to get, you know, back to the node of that standing wave. So we've got two and a half wavelengths in the microwave. So 2.5 lambda equals L. So we'll call L the length or the, you know, the, the, the length along this axis of the microwave. You can call it the width if you like either. So what does that tell us then about the, the size of the microwave? Well, since then, uh, two and a half lambda, so 2.5 uh, lambda is equal to L, where, which we're calling the width of the microwave, then L is going to be equal to 5 over 2, so 2.5, whatever way you want to write it, times the 12.2 centimeter wavelength of the microwave, and that gives us a total of 30.5 centimeters. So in order for our microwave to include uh, 2.5 wavelengths or 5 antinodes, it has to be exactly 30.5 centimeters in width. Um, for that to work. So that's part A. I'm very I'm always very bad at labeling the, the parts as given to us in the question, but that's part A. So part B then say, it, it asks us to find the frequency. So find the frequency. I'll just write it in here rather than going back to the question. So the frequency then, we know that the frequency of an electromagnetic wave is equal to the speed of light in that medium over lambda. So we'll take this as a vacuum for argument's sake. So then the frequency is going to be 3 0 0.00 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second divided by the wavelength which is 12.2 uh centimeter actually let's go put that in meters and not confuse ourselves so 0 0.122 meters and that gives us a frequency of 2.46 by 10 to the power 10 to the power of 9 hertz and that's equivalent to 2.46 gigahertz and I think that's a pretty common frequency for a microwave oven. So there's a good chance that if you look at the back of the oven in your house or your apartment, that you'll find that the, the frequency of the radiation that the microwave radiates is 2.46 gigahertz or something similar. So in the last part of the question, then, the we're told that there's a manufacturing error and now L is equal to 35.5 centimeters. So we've added... 30, or sorry, we've added five centimeters to our microwave's width by mistake, and it's now 35.5 centimeters. So what does the, the length, the wavelength of the radiation need to be so that we still have our five um, antinodes in there? So we still have to fulfill the condition that 2.5 times lambda, um, which is how we get five antinodes into the microwave, is equal to the length of the microwave. So now, so that tells us lambda now is going to be equal to 2L over uh, 5. And that's going to be equal to twice our new L. So that's 35.5 centimeters 
divided by uh, 5, which is what we had already, and that's equal to 14.2 centimeters. So we need to change the wavelength of our microwave radiation. If we had min mismanufactured our microwave and it was 5 centimeters bigger than it should be, we'd have to change the wavelength of the radiation to 14.2 centimeters in order to have our five antinodes still in there. And if we were to calculate the frequency now of those waves, F equals C over lambda equals three by 10 to the eight meters per second over 0 0.142 meters, that would give us a new frequency of 2.11 by 10 to the nine hertz, or again, that's 2.11 gigahertz. Very good. So um, that's basically, you know, I suppose, in a way, why one of the reasons why microwaves are useful is that, you know, we can fit a, a, a sort of a, a reasonable number of microwave wavelengths into something that's pretty easy to fit into our kitchen. All, also, combined with the fact that microwaves uh, interact very well with the water in your food, and that's how they cook it. But for example, if, if, if visible light was able to interact strongly with the water in your food, and cook it, the wavelength of visible light is so small that your oven would have to be, you know, just a couple of microns in size. Whereas if you had very long wavelength radiation, for example, you know, low frequency radio waves, you would have to have, a, you know, an extremely large oven. So microwaves are just the right wavelength to create a device, I suppose, to fit in your kitchen. And they also have a very strong interaction with the water in the food, which helps for cooking it.